with the Malta Eurovision Song Contest 2023. It's the day of the semi-final and with us is Giada from Malta. She's here and uh, she's no stranger because she took part in the national final previously. But first of all, hello, nice to meet you again. Hello to all the followers. Um, uh, Yes, it's finally the day we've been preparing for so long and I actually can't wait to perform for all the viewers tonight. <laughs> well, uh, before when we met it was Jade, right? So yes. what, why the name change? Um, I decided to have a stage name because I think every artist um, it's important to have a stage name because and actually Jada is Jade in Italian. So, and it's a name which my father used to call me when I was a little girl, so <laughs> yes, and then it came Jada. Fabulous. But one other special thing is that you and your daddy have, you're competing in the same semi-final that has never been in the history of the Eurovision Song Contest. Yes. So how does it feel to, to uh, do that? Like, like, you have a problem with your daddy, you're fighting, or <laughs> you're happy when he goes through, or he's happy when you go through? No. Uh, basically, like two years ago, we had the chance to compete uh, in a festival, a Maltese festival, um, but we are together. And this time, yes, we're um, competing against each other. Honestly, I mean, it is a little bit awkward, I cannot lie, but uh, I'm happy either or. At the end of the day, he's my father. He was my guidance since I was three years old, and I depend on him a lot. <laughs> so... Uh, that so was I'm a very good, very good hint because the song is called I Depend On You. So tell us uh, about the song, the message in it and uh, yeah, what it is about. Basically, I Depend On You, um, it talks about that it doesn't matter from which part of the world you're coming from because at the end of the day, everyone should be able to depend on each other in order to have a much more peaceful um, life. So. Okay, <laughs> and who, who wrote the song? Were you part of the creation of it? Um, yes, I was part of it, and uh, but the person behind my song and even my dad, my dad's song, um, it's Melanie Georgiou from England, and she's our producer and manager, and she's taking care of us. <laughs> Super. Now, what is it that brings you back to this festival? Because you were there before, now you're coming back. So why? Basically, I believe that Eurovision is a big platform for every artist. Um, it's not always about winning because a lot of people watch this and you don't know what can come out from, from your performance. Um, the first two years were about dancing and singing. This year I focus more on my vocals, which I'm literally very happy about. And uh, I'm more excited actually uh, for the reaction of uh, my followers to watch it tonight. Yeah, dancing and singing. So what is your preference in that one? You, you prefer more to be a singer or a dancer? <laughs> I actually can't decide, honestly. Because <laughs> then when I see a performance, which has that upbeat, you know, it still gives me a little bit of a heartache. I don't know what to say, mm -hmm. but uh, yes, I mean, either or music is just a passion for me and it's more than just performing, you know. Now, I know in Malta, many of the of the singers have also got a different job or other other things they're going to do as well uh, besides of singing. So what, what do you spend your time with when you don't sing? Dancing? <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm actually a junior universal banker, so I work in a bank. <laughs> and honestly, yes, sometimes it is a little bit difficult to like balance everything out because a full-time job is uh, obviously takes a lot of time. Um, but as I said, music is so important to me that I can't just leave it on the side. So you need to find time for everything. Exactly, it's very important. I think for me, also music for me is the first thing I switch on in the morning, and just to sing along with it and and uh, have a good day. Basically, that that that's what what it does. Yeah. Um, uh, Eurovision has a big history in Malta. Uh, the Malta Eurovision itself, the national final called Eurosong before. What are your first memories of uh, the Malta Eurosong? Well, um, I think back in 2004, 2004 um, I was like four to six years old. Um, my dad competed the first time, so I think from there onwards we were always backstage and involved in everything um, since we were little. So from there onwards we watch Eurovision like every year, we create parties and you know to watch it. So um, it's been there since a long time ago and it's a dream obviously, hopefully one day <laughs> I'll get to um, represent more. Now let's take your daddy's uh, participation out of, of uh, the next question, but which of the artists and singers from the previous years you really looked up at? Um, I have to say I love Amber with The Warrior. I think she's an artist which I look up to a lot because uh, she has the same uh, style, let's say style, um, but I love her timbre of her voice and she's amazing. And she's hosting, co-hosting yes. with Glenn together. <laughs> nice, yes, nice. Yes. So, um, 
And Eurovision Song Contest, if you win this, you go to the final. If, you, if you're amongst uh, the top 16, your, your chances to get the ticket to Liverpool, to the Eurovision Song Contest. Uh, what are your memories from the first Eurovisions you watched? So is that so? The first memories of the Eurovisions you watched? Um, well, honestly, I don't have a good memory. <laughs> but uh, last year, for example, there was a big favorite of mine, Chanel from Spain. So more, I think more, more. <laughs> she did everything um, I've imagined. I mean, it's so, she did it so effortlessly and amazing. It was the first ever song and directly number three at Eurovision. Yes. Fantastic that was. Actually, and she's a dancer. <laughs> yes, as well. <laughs> well, my dad, um, uh, he didn't sing before. He, he entered with uh, his entry U. It was his first time as well, and he came third. So these things, you don't know how it's going to go, it you know? I mean, you take your chance, you do what you have to do, and yeah. at the end of the day, it's out of your control, so. Now, did your, your daddy also give you advice how to do the Malta Eurovision Song Contest? Um, this year we had to take like <laughs> our own, uh, you know, because obviously he has his going on, so he can't do everything. Yeah. Um, but uh, yes, we help each other a lot. I mean, at the end of the day, his guidance and his word is the final one because um, I believe in him and he believes in me, and it's, I think it's very special to have to be both here, you know. Wow! Well, I must say to the audience listening in. Uh, it's actually heavily raining outside in Malta, yes. which is a rarity. Uh, it's a so very scary weather today. Um, hopefully it calms down a little bit for tonight, because I think people will <laughs> get scared, but hopefully they still come to watch us. Jada, thank you very much. All the best of luck for thank your you performance at the Malta Eurovision Song Contest and also for the time, the career afterwards. Thank you very much uh, for being here and for interviewing us. And I say bye to all the followers. And obviously, if they like my song, um, they follow me. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you very much. Thank you. Grazie, Hafner.